This is Tom Goolsby, and this is my column for the fourth week of May 2013. It's entitled, SBI Transfer to Public Safety, A Smart Move. Attorney General Roy Cooper's recent dog and pony show was an embarrassment to his office. Cooper had gotten wind that Senate budget writers were planning to transfer the State Bureau of Investigation, that's the SBI, from Cooper's control to the Department of Public Safety, that's DPS. The long-serving Democrat Attorney General wants to keep the SBI, but the best excuse that he could come up with was that he needs agents to fight public corruption. Now, can anyone remember any heavy lifting by Cooper during the investigation of former Governor Mike Easley? What about the investigations of Purdue's henchmen who recently entered criminal pleas? Cooper, not known as a litigator, needs to come up with better arguments for his case. Apparently, He didn't read the budget document very carefully because the agents tasked with the small public corruption section, less than a dozen in number, were actually left with him. As for the rest of the SBI, they're being sent to the Department of Public Safety where all the state's other law enforcement agencies reside. Word from the agents in the field is that they'll be glad to be under Department of Public Safety Secretary Karen Shanahan, who, unlike Cooper, is a former assistant United States attorney and a seasoned prosecutor. Another thing that Shanahan has going for him is that he has no embarrassing legacy of presiding over multiple fiascos, as does Cooper. This is the same attorney general who presided over the debacle at the SBI where agents withheld exculpatory evidence or distorted it in more than 230 cases over a 16-year period. Cooper was made aware of the problems as early as 2005 when he was pressed by activists and the media to look into the case of Floyd Brown. Somehow, the mentally disabled Brown, who could not recite the alphabet past the letter K, was able to give the SBI investigators a confession detailing how he murdered an elderly woman in his neighborhood. After 14 years in a mental institution, Brown was exonerated in 2007. For his part, Cooper never bothered to order an investigation into the case until 2009. Even then, he only did so in face of a lawsuit. When he's not committing malfeasance, he's committing nonfeasance. In other words, Cooper is missing in action whenever hard choices need to be made. Take, for instance, the recent fight over restarting North Carolina's death penalty and repealing the ill-named Racial Justice Act. Why wasn't Cooper at the General Assembly, standing toe-to-toe with district attorneys from across the state? He was nowhere to be found. What about the General Assembly's call for North Carolina to stand with other states in fighting the socialized medical mandates of Obamacare? Cooper said no, he wouldn't help. Yet somehow he was able to find time to oppose North Carolina's marriage amendment supported by 61% of our citizens. In the end, we have an attorney general who is neither a fighter nor a leader, and not much of an administrator either. His justification for keeping the SBI is that he wishes to use it for public corruption cases when less than a dozen agents are assigned to that unit. Cooper personally has no track record of a successful prosecution. In fact, the North Carolina attorney general has no constitutional authority to prosecute anyone. Senate budget writers decided to place the SBI with the rest of the state's law enforcement divisions in order to enhance coordination among these agencies. Significant savings of up to $2 million a year are expected from consolidation starting in the second year. A chief budget writer and Senate Majority Leader Harry Brown, a Republican from Onslow County, said it best in an interview with the Associated Press, quote, It simply doesn't make sense for the state's top attorney to supervise the SBI, just like it doesn't make sense for your local district attorney to supervise sheriffs or the police. Senator Brown, an auto dealer by trade, didn't need a law degree to come up with his common sense answer. In fact, Roy Cooper doesn't deserve the SBI just because he wants it. Instead, hardworking SBI agents deserve a place with the rest of the state's law enforcement in order to be fully utilized, and the people of North Carolina deserve to save $2 million a year. I'm Tom Goolsby, a state senator, practicing attorney, and law professor. I'm co-chair of Judiciary One and the Justice and Public Safety Appropriations Committees.